Good evening everyone, time for another silver update. You are looking at the four hour chart and we had a bit of a rally today. We're up to 37.6 which is price that the first time we actually reached this price was in late March. So even though people have argued that a lot of technical damage was done with this drop in reality the bull market trend continues and we seem to be rounding up here it's going to be interesting I've drawn a falling pennant formation and I've based on just these two lines up here to see where it may penetrate these pennants can extend themselves so it's not unusual to see them go and test and fail back and go out so it could go out to a lot of places but normally when we break through to the upside on the pennant it, it forms a cup and then it backfills until it reaches somewhere up in this point and then it makes a test to try to break through so on this chart that's what it looks like it's doing to me the MACD is looking bullish on this rise that we're on right now as we go farther back to the daily we're still trying to reach the zero line but I don't want to go back to that first I want to look at the volume now there's a couple sets of volume that came in the center of this first one, main one is right about here we've got another one that came in right about here you can see that these volume lines correspond to about here and here so as long as the prices are rising above where the volume came in then we can say that this is buying volume even though a lot of the volume came in on the down draft if the spike itself this is the type of spike we're looking at if the spike of the volume appears on a low and the price continues to rise from that spike then generally we can say that that's a bullish sign because that's an indication of buyers coming in now if we turn around and fail something like this and the price is trading below that volume somewhere down in here then all of this volume turns from being positive to negative so we do not want to see a failure below this line because that's all of our volume is above that line so as it stands right now that volume that we put in is historically the largest we've put in and it's still buying volume as far as the chart goes I want to jump over to the NetDania quote list which gives a quote of all the currencies and a few commodities and I want to do a bit of a rant about the silver price if you remember I did a video late last year on the percentage returns the year-to-date change and if you remember silver was at about 84 percent return for the year now as you can see even after the tremendous correction that we've taken silver is still up over 22 percent for the year oils up 11.75 golds up 8.64 so and what's that uh, the Swiss franc dollar versus Swiss franc is down 10 percent so just on the percentage based returns silver was the best investment of last year hands down by any measure and again it's still the best investment this year the reason I'm bringing this up is because 
I was actually going to do a study on news articles, but I was unable to find them, so I'm just going to summarize my thoughts based on the chart. Now, if you remember, we had this is this point right here roughly in December about here this is where silver had returned an 84 percent return and I think when we hit roughly near 50 here for the year silver was at 56 percent but if you remember last year there were there was a virtual silence in the news media about the 84 percent return that silver made for the year and that's pretty startling when you think about the fact that that was the best returning asset for the year and it was one of the best assets as far as percentage returns actually for the last 10 years running so the reason I'm bringing this up is because if you remember when we hit when, when we approached fifty dollars uh, I will bring it in tighter so you can see the chart but if you remember when we had the May 1st massacre back up in here we had a lot of strange things happen we were trying to break through 50 and then if you remember in the late night hours on a weekend on a holiday when all markets were closed and only the Globex was trading and Asia was on a holiday the next day this is when they did that six dollar instantaneous smackdown of the silver price and if you remember about this time this is when we had an inundation of silver stories, silver bubble stories that appeared in the news media. They appeared in the mainstream press. Uh, there was coverage, all the silver shills, Don Harold, and everybody that was bashing silver was brought out, trotted before the press. There was just an inundation of people. And what's so strange about that was the utter silence during this rise up until they did this coordinated smackdown so the point is is that if you have the press utterly silent about an asset that's returned 84 percent that's beat all assets and utterly silent for another rise of 56 percent and then only right before a coordinated takedown occurs all of the press organs come forward at once with anti-silver articles that should give you pause because that is a coordinated attack that is a orchestrated thing and that should make you very bullish because what that tells you is they're very afraid of the price of silver they're very afraid of people discovering and understanding the tremendous value that silver has and the potential price explosion that we're looking at and nothing has changed in the fundamentals in fact this price as I pointed out the other day in my video about the collapse in the miners price relative to the price of silver this correction has just made the problem worse silver should have broken through 50 and it should have run towards a hundred and then perhaps maybe corrected to 75 or somewhere in the triple digits we might have seen some kind of incentive for the miners specifically the silver miners or more importantly perhaps some type of recycling to begin to occur because it becomes economical but this orchestrated collapse that's brought us back down to 36 37 has put us again in a position which we've been in for a very long time of putting the price of silver below the price it needs to be for the people who get it to make a profit and so that's going to exacerbate the shortage of course the shortage is continuing and uh, you can see that in the lack of supply in the bullion 
dealers and the US mint and all the other mints so the point of this is that all of this is illusory all of the silver fundamentals remain in place and the price has no reason to go lower and every reason in the world to go higher so I want to transition over real quick to some of the charts on some of the other commodities this is a site that I use quite frequently and it's a very useful site it's a free site and it's a site I go to to get the long-term view of the charts and where they're going this is long-term commodity charts and if you remember we just recently had a massive move in corn and you can see that we had the 2008 top the commodity top and we've exceeded that top now and we've got a number of other commodities that are moving we've got cotton and you can see this spike which is beyond anything that occurred in 2008 if we pull up the CRB cash index which is a basket of the commodities you can see we've exceeded the high in 2008 so even in this quote unquote depressed economic situation we're in the commodities are making new highs and prices are rising these prices will soon be reflected in the price of ordinary goods we've also got live cattle you can see it has recently put in a new high and these go all the way back to the 70s now these are nominal prices they're not inflation adjusted so it's perfectly normal for, for them to rise in price soybeans they have not exceeded the 2008 high but they're approaching it so there's definitely inflation in the in the system that's going to come out this is wheat wheat is still below that but it's again approaching those highs of 2008 top so I want to look at a long-term chart of well let's look at copper real quick again we exceeded the 2008 2007 highs so the inflation is continuing it's going to get worse much worse but I wanted to look at the 10-year note because I wanted to give you a long-term view of that and as I pointed out with the silver chart how they came in in May and made a giant fuss about how silver was in a bubble it was a parabolic market overbought it couldn't keep going well actually this chart that you're looking at here is probably the biggest bubble in the history of the world this is the 10-year note and you can see this chart goes all the way from 82 to the present 82 and a little bit before was when we were looking at roughly 15 to 20 percent interest rates even all the way on the short term if you want to look at the short term they don't have a t-bill on this index but you can pull up the three-month euro dollar and that comes pretty close because it mirrors the t-bill there's a ted spread where they're not always matched but they're very they're closely enough matched that it, it works so you can see the zerp that we have the, the zero interest rate policy has been in effect essentially since mid 2008 it started on that way early 2008 but since mid to late 2008 we've been running at interest rates that are near zero we've gone for almost two years now if you look back to the Bush interest rate decrease to revive the economy we had about two years before they started rising in rates on the short term the Clinton recovery we had 
just a little bit over a year and then they started raising rates. So you can see we're almost to the zero line and there's no rate increases in sight. And I don't have a chart for the Japanese the Japanese bond, but if you remember they basically decreased rates to zero and even negative and just kept them there for a long time and of course that didn't revive the situation. You can see that the Japanese stock market has been in a bear market for going on 25 years, 20, 20 to 25 years we're going on now where the market has pretty much just gone straight down. So hopefully not, we're not trying to emulate the Japanese experience because it's a uh, recipe for failure. These interest rates are not reviving anything. The QE1 and QE2 and all the things that the Fed has done have been colossal failures. So hopefully we don't pursue that policy that the Japanese did, but we probably will. So if that's the case and we get a QE3, I expect silver to rise dramatically from this point and Probably 68 is the target that I'm looking at, although that may be a longer term than just in the next month or so. Maybe in the fall we're looking at that. But the main point is that nothing has changed in the silver fundamental picture, and it looks like we're rising. As long as these prices stay at around 37, the drawdown of the existing silver stocks will continue. There's no reason for anyone to go out and try to mine silver. First of all, because it's very difficult to do. There are very few direct silver mines, and most of the mines that produce silver produce it as a byproduct of other metals. So when you hear of the $5 an ounce pulling out of the ground, quote, you can just dismiss that out of hand because it's nonsense. That's based on the other metals. It has nothing to do with silver because they're not mining silver. The silver mines that mine primarily silver, such as PAAS and some of the others, as I showed you the other day, they're going down because they just they're not profitable. So as long as silver stays below fifty, I think as long as silver stays below a hundred, honestly and probably even a below, below its inflation adjusted price which depending on whether you use fed stats or whether you use shadow stats it's anywhere from 140 to 240 until silver gets back to that price you're going to see the shortages the delays and all these things continue and the problem is just going to get worse and worse and worse which ultimately sets up a larger explosion in price sometime in the future and that's of course why people like Mike Maloney kind of laugh off the manipulation story and and they don't really care and the reason why is because they're very happy about being able to buy silver under its real value and they're also happy about the fact that when silver finally corrects to its real value it will be that much more explosive the longer they suppress the price, the more explosive the move is going to be. And I already expect triple digits and quadruple digits, but it may even go higher than that if they continue the suppression. And we'll talk to you next time.